So let's talk about let's talk about indexes for a few minutes. Before we even get into this page, let's talk about what an index really is. An index is an object in a database which is used to speed up access to the table in a uh, to a table in a database. I'm going to use an analogy of a telephone book. The telephone book is an index on last name, first name, and middle name, which brings you back an address and a telephone number. So let's think about this one. If I am going to look up me, Jeff Garbus, in the telephone book, I'm going to take my thumb, I'm going to run it across the top of the pages, I'm going to scroll very fast until I get to the G's, I'm going to slow down when I get to the GAs, slow down more at GAR, and then I'm going to plop the book open, plop being one of my technical words. After I've plopped the book open, I am going to uh, take my finger, my finger being one of my technical tools, and I'm going to run it down the page until I get to Garbus. When I get to Garbus, I'm going to slide my finger over to the next column, which is first name, then I'm going to move my finger down until I get to Jeffrey. Once I have Jeffrey Garbus, I'm going to slide off to the right, and I'm going to pick up the address and the telephone number. If I have another Jeffrey Garbus, I'll pick that one up at the same time by coming down to the next row. Uh, interestingly, there aren't likely to be many Jeffrey Garbuses in the phone book. You're far more likely to uh, find no Garbuses at all. Now, the telephone book is therefore a great lookup on last name and first name, but let's ask a few more questions. First question, what if what I want to bring back is all the Jeffreys? Is the telephone book a good lookup? It's not. It's a horrible lookup. If I try to use the telephone book to find all the Jeffreys, I have to turn every single page of the phone book. That, by the way, is an index scan. If you ever see an index scan in your plan, it means it is turning every page of the phone book. It is using the index, but this is not an efficient use of the index. Frequently, we'll choose not to use that type of a lookup. Now, how about if I ask the question, how many Jeffreys are, I'm sorry, how many Garbuses are in the phone book? Well, how many Garbuses are in the phone book? This is a fine index to use for finding all the Garbuses. We use exactly the same path to get down to Garbus, and then we don't move our finger right to get to Jeffrey. An index on last name, first name is a great lookup for last name. No problem at all. Now, here's another question on indexes. Why is the telephone book, which was clearly originally put together way before computers came out, why is the telephone book organized last name, comma, first name, and not first name, comma, last name? Unless I'm in a bond flick, I'm introducing myself as Jeff Garbus, not Garbus Jeff. Why do we do the lookup that way? Well, at that point, you take a half a step back and you ask yourself, how many Jeffs are there in the phone book? Well, there's going to be quite a lot. There's going to be pages and pages of Jeffs. That's probably more than one Jeff just in the 40 people that we've got uh, listed in, uh, in this webinar. How many Garbuses do I have? My guess is there's only one Garbus in this webinar, and that's me. One of the things that you'll find is that the granularity of the columns, when you have a choice, is going to drive the order. If I can narrow it down first before going over to the next column, I'm going to save myself some time. If I have Jeffries, I have to look at Jeffries, and I have to scan lots of G's before I get to the Garbuses. If I start with Garbus, once I get the Garbus, which is relatively quick, I have very few Garbuses to check for Jeffries. So granularity is relevant. So as we come back to the slide, an index normally will correspond with a search argument. A search argument is something of the format column operator constant. So ID equals 1 is a search argument. A useful index will be used to limit the number of rows coming back by setting a boundary for the result set. In this example, we're saying where date of birth is between 3-3-1941 and 4 4 As this is in one of my classes, I like to point out a couple of things here uh, as well as I'm looking at this as a search argument. I look at two additional things. First, in the first column, the first side of the between, we're specifying 1941 on the left side, and on the right side we're just saying 65. Now this query will work. 
The reason it will work is because if you are prior to 50, the server thinks you're 2000 and something. So uh, January 1st slash 13 is 2013 because that's prior to 50. If you're after 50, it says you're 1900 and something. So 65 is after 50, that would be 1965. Many people are aware of that one, but here's one that not everybody is aware of. Let's say just for the sake of argument that I have 100 rows coming back here. I have 100 people born between 33-1941 and 44-65. What happens if I reverse this and I say, where date of birth is between 44-1965 and 33-1941? Do I get the same 1,000 rows back? The answer to that one's a little scary. It depends what version of SQL Server you're running. Uh, with the onset of the ANSI 89 standard, this was before it was an ISO standards board, it was an ANSI standards board. Before the onset of the ANSI, stand, uh, ANSI 89 standard, it worked equally well in either direction. With the advent of the ANSI 89 standard, between is defined as greater than or equal to the first number and less than or equal to the second number. So, this sets a boundary. We know date of birth has a fixed range. We can look up approximately what that range is by looking in the history. The server knows whether to use an index or not. Now, let's take an index uh, similar to that phone book uh, lookup that we were doing. An index on the author's table on last name and first name. So we create the index. Uh, the question becomes, which of the following indexes, if any, uh, could be helped, sorry, which of the following queries could be helped by the index? Well, let's take a look at this first one. Select from the table where the first name is Jim and the last name is Smith. This is pretty much what this uh, index is for. It really doesn't matter if we say first name equals Jim and last name is Smith, or if we say last name is Smith and first name is Jim. We have an and. We want both of those things to be true. The server figures it out. It says, yes, this is a good index. The next query says, select from the author's table where the first name is equal to Jim. Is this a good index? Well, let's go back to the telephone book. Is, is, uh, if I want to bring back all the Jeffs, is the telephone book a good lookup? Well, it's horrible. Uh, we have to turn every single page of the telephone book in order to find all the Jeffs. However, that is slightly better than dialing all the telephone numbers to find all the Jeffs. As a result, what we will probably end up doing, what we may end up doing, is a, an index scan. The first one is going to do an index seek, which is very fast. The second one will do either an index scan or a table scan. Anytime you see scan in one of your plans, you are misusing an index or not using an index. Finally, let's take a look at the last one. The last one says, select from authors where the last name is Smith or the first name is equal to Jim. Well, this is a great lookup for Smith. We've already talked about that. It's a horrible lookup for Jim. Because it's a horrible lookup for Jim, we will probably not do a table scan to find the Jims and an index scan to find the Smiths. We will probably simply do a table scan and filter the results out. Note that if we have a tiny number of rows in the table, say less than a page worth of, of data, we'll just bring the, the page of data back. We won't bother looking at an index at all anyway. So back to index selection, uh, we'll talk about the index types, the optimizer selection criteria. We've already talked about when indexes slow down the data access. And we'll talk about index stats and usage.